talk about what you guys are going to be doing um, as your homework. So we've been doing a lot of talking about writing and idea generation. And you guys in your breakout sessions have been doing a great job of talking with each other um, and uh, talking about your ideas. But it occurs to us that we have not given you formal training in how to talk about your research ideas. And so that's really the point of this next, I'll try to keep it to 10 or 15 minutes um, so you guys could get to your breakout sessions. But what we want to do is give you a little bit of training on how to talk about your science in small bits so that you can get your point across, but still get that information that you need from your breakout groups. And, and eventually you can use these techniques in any kind of format to get a job, to talk to your parents. Um, these are principles you can use um, outside of just this class and, um, and outside of your candidacy exam. Okay, so there are a few formats that I'm gonna talk about, about brief research summaries. Um, elevator pitches are one form of those. Um, but another form of those is called a three-minute thesis. And actually, um, I'm debating now whether we should have you do a three-minute thesis or an elevator pitch. But anyway, um, well, I'll talk about them both and you guys can kind of do what you want with this assignment. So a three-minute thesis is actually a, 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 a type of quick research summary that was invented at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and, and I'll read this to you. It's an internationally recognized competition that challenges PhD students to prevent a compelling oration on their thesis and its significance in just three minutes in a language anyone can understand. Um, uh, three, minute, uh, three minute thesis is not an exercise in trivializing or dumbing down research, but requires students to consolidate their ideas, crystallize their research discoveries and capture the imagination of their audience. So to be able to talk about your research in a short period of time is a skill. Um, and we wanna help you start learning that skill. An elevator pitch is fundamentally a little different only because of the time. In a three minute thesis, you get three minutes. In an elevator pitch, this is, you're supposed to be able to pitch this to somebody in an elevator and convince them that you're doing something great. How long are you in an elevator? Well, we're gonna give you a minute. <laughs> so you're gonna to try to distill down even further what you're doing into a one minute, roughly one minute summation. An elevator pitch is a summarization and in a sense a promotion of your work. As the name indicates, it's meant to last the time it takes to have a conversation during a ride in an elevator, so up to a minute. Elevator pitches are short and to the point, but also grab the attention of your audience and make sure they wanna learn more. Okay, so um, why might we need these types of short snippets um, for our careers? Um, um, so you want to engage your audience. So you want to know your, your um, audience will want to know what you're doing, well, how you're doing it and why and how it relates to the real world. And depending on your audience, whether it's actually somebody in an elevator you, that has no uh, science experience or it's a committee of the faculty at your candidacy exam, you're going to want to adjust kind of what you have in these different snippets. Um, what you're, why you're doing, how you're doing it, and what, how it relates to the real world will change a little bit depending on your audience. Okay. All right. So let's think about what effective presentations look like. What, so thinking back to summer, uh, seminars that you've attended that you thought were awesome, what makes a presentation effective? Well, these are some of the things that, um, that I thought of. Um, first of all, the significance was clear. You, you knew why they were doing what they were doing. Um, they only had to introduce what you needed to know. They didn't just talk about random stuff that had nothing to do with their problem. They focused on background information that was needed. They avoided technical terms and jargon, and they started off with a big picture, and they narrowed down to a specific problem. Uh, um, what makes a presentation ineffective? So something that would ruin your presentation, rambling, lack of organization, it lacks big picture, there's no significance, you don't know why they're doing it too much data, and then of course, no eye contact, lack of enthusiasm, monotone, we, nobody likes those kinds of seminars. So when you're doing your presentation, you wanna make sure that you, you embrace all those qualities in the seminars that you love and you try to avoid, or you know, learn to get rid of those others. Okay, um, all right, so how do you make uh, three minutes or one minute interesting and exciting? First of all, you wanna keep it simple, just like we talked about in your writing. At some point you wanna use, uh, the purpose of my research is statements, very clear, clear statements. So there's no having to muddle through a lot of words. 
um, you want to tell like a story. In any story, there's kind of a tension moment. That's what we call the gap in the fields, right? And then you have kind of something that's interesting that you take the, the, the audience by surprise. Um, how do you solve that problem? What's interesting? Oftentimes in these kinds of small snippets, it's nice to use a metaphor or something that can relate to, this is really more important when you're relating to an audience that's not experts. So for your breakout sessions, you probably don't need metaphor, um, but when you're talking to your parents, it would be great to use a metaphor. It might be really helpful for them to see the connection to something else. Um, try to add a little bit of excitement and mystery to make that story into something great. And so and just remember you are telling a story. Even if you're talking about your proposal, it's still got a start, a middle, and an end. And the gap in the field is that tension moment. So I thought we would do a few, um, I'll give you a few examples of some of these um, three minute moment, three minute, um, um, three minute, uh, uh, presentations and this one is actually um, it turns out every year at the graduate symposium the university-wide graduate symposium they do a three-minute um, thesis competition and this was one that I thought was really good um, and so I thought we would watch a three-minute thesis so here's um, the three-minute thesis by um, Dina Dramschroeder she's in the Department of Physiology Mary Kay, there is an issue with audio. We can't hear it for some reason. It's silent. Can they not hear it? They can't hear it? Correct. We cannot hear the presenter. Hmm. How do I change that? I just turned up the volume. Do you hear her on your end? Yeah, I do. Oh, that's interesting. Um, here, let's do this. OK, let's try this again. I would like to introduce you to Can a young boy named Christopher. And at first glance, he looks like any young child playing dress up. But what you don't see is that Christopher suffers from a rare disease known as Hort syndrome. Hort syndrome is caused by a change in one's DNA, which results in mitochondrial dysfunction. Now normally, mitochondria are able to power your whole body, which is why they're referred to as a powerhouse of the cell. But due to their mitochondrial dysfunction, Hort's patients have muscle weakness, heart problems and are exercise intolerant. In other words, they aren't able to perform physical activity for the same amount of time as healthy individuals. Now, as you could imagine, this negatively impacts their overall quality of life. Now, my research is focused on improving their exercise capacity or how long they're able to be physically active in the hope that they're able to improve their heart function and overall quality of life. And to do this, I use fruit flies. Yes, those little flies that come out if you eat fruit on your counter too long. And although they look really different from us, many of their behaviors and biological processes are similar to ours. Thus, anything I find using the fruit fly will most likely help human birth patients. Now in the lab, I have fruit flies that have the same change to their DNA as human birth patients. And what I can do is I can run them on a fruit fly treadmill. Now this treadmill is just like any you would see at your local gym. It causes fruit flies to run. And what I've seen is that my birth fruit flies have reduced endurance relative to healthy flies, just like human birth patients. Now, the cool thing is I'm looking at this vitamin B3, which is just a drug that you can get at CVS right now to see if it can improve their endurance. And when I feed vitamin B3 to my birth fruit flies, their endurance increases to wild type healthy levels. Now, this is really promising for human birth patients because one day they may be able to go down to CVS, take this vitamin and improve their overall physical capacity. So hopefully then they could exercise better and improve their overall quality of life. Thanks. Okay, so Dina was able to do that in two minutes. And I thought, you know, I thought she did a really nice job. In your case, um, when you talk about your proposals, you may not want to, you know, you don't get the slide or, I mean, in a three minute thesis, the concept is you have one slide that you use. Um, but, you know, I think she did a nice job just going through what her problem was, how she's do doing the problem and what the significant impact would be. Okay, so that's an example of a three minute um, thesis. And I think what I wanna emphasize here is kind of what are the, so I wanna just give you an example so you can see what I'm talking about in, in terms of these um, short snippets of your research. 
but I wanted to introduce this kind of um, this concept called the ABT or the and but therefore method for really distilling down your research into a short, short time. Um, and I think this is a kind of a cool concept. So basically the and but therefore method is where you discuss background information and discuss more background information and maybe a little bit more background information, but there's a problem, there's a gap in the field, there's a problem. Therefore, we're going to do these experiments so that we can understand and get past that problem. Because once we get past that problem, the world will be a better place, okay? So this and but therefore method is basically saying, give the background information, have that tension but moment. What's my gap in the field? What's the mystery and excitement of my story? And then the conclusion, how I'm gonna solve the problem and what is going to happen. So that's a way to kind of distill down your um, short, um, short uh, uh, elevator pitch or three minute thesis, whatever you choose to do, um, that will, will help you to, to really uh, capture your audience and have them understand. I wanted to just end with one um, elevator pitch. So this is an example of somebody who is able to talk about the research in one minute or less. So it just gives you a little bit of an idea what, what, you know, what level of detail to have here. Um, so this is a, um, a student from Johns Hopkins University and, um, and I'll let her take it away. Okay, right, I have to go to the internet, sorry. Huh. Okay, so here is Kate. Hi, my name is Kate Bradford and I'm a fourth year doctoral student in the Department of Biology at Johns Hopkins. My current research focuses on a cellular process of how cells internalize things from their outside environment. Basically, I study how cells eat. And we know that as humans, if we eat too much or too little, too fast or too slow, it can make us sick. And this is exactly what happens in our cells as well. In fact, our brain cells are especially sensitive to over under eating, and it can lead to their death, which we call neurodegeneration. And this is seen in diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. So it's really important that we figure out how cells eat normally in order to know what happens when things go wrong. So while I don't study these diseases directly, I do study the basic cellular process that's messed up in these disorders. And hopefully my research will lead to better treatment options for these patients in the future. Okay, so you can, you can kind of see how she... ordered something from your favorite online... Sorry. You can see how she used kind of the and but therefore method. Um, their background information, uh, cells need to have certain uh, food she used as the metaphor, um, but um, if there's a dysregulation, it can lead to neurodegeneration. Therefore, I study this process so that we can have uh, better drug paradigms. So you can see how she kind of used that same method to come up with her, um, with her uh, thesis. Okay, so um, the last thing I'll show you is just your homework assignment, and I'll stop there. Um, so what we want you to do for this next homework assignment is really practice this um, oral presentation concept that we've had here. So I was supposed to put it at the end of that presentation, and I must have forgotten. So here's your homework six. Um, we basically want you to write an elevator pitch, but I, I'm, I would be okay if you do a three-minute thesis. So basically, you can just write something that's between a minute and three minutes long. Base that, you know, and that um, elevator pitch or that three minute thesis should be on your independent idea. Um, aim for, I say aim for roughly a minute, but again, I think we can relax that to be a little bit longer if you would like to go into a little bit more depth. Um, you, you want to use, I would try this and but therefore method. So here's my background information, there's a gap in the field, and then this is how I'm going to solve the problem. And that way you can really now distill down your proposal into something kind of um, a little bit better, easier to package. Um, and then hopefully, you know, the goal here is that if you're practicing really being effective at presenting your your issues in your proposal writing, when you go now to your breakout sessions, you can say, all right, I like my idea here, but I'm having this problem here. Can you guys help me through it? So we can be able to communicate a little more effectively together. Okay. Any questions about that assignment? There's not a single question today.
All right. Well, I guess no questions. It was so clear. All right. Well, um, it is time to go to your breakout sessions then. Um, I want to remind you before we go that we will be sending your AIMS pages to faculty to read. And we're asking the faculty to have comments back to you by next Monday. So thank you for turning in those assignments on time because we really want to give the faculty enough time that they can um, they can really give you some constructive comments. As you know, many of us are trying to reopen our, our reopening the labs right now. So the faculty are, are kind of busy. So um, we really appreciate you giving us the full week to get through those documents. Anyway, um, we hope those uh, comments from faculty are helpful to you and we'll um, maybe make a comment about that next time. But it'll take about a week for, we, for, you to, for them to get back to you. All right, folks, thanks for coming to class. Sorry about the technical difficulties at the beginning. Um, we'll be posting the video later so you can always go back and look. Have great breakout sessions. Please use some of the principles that we talked about today to, to, um, to talk with your group and get that effective feedback. It's really, um, it's great to see you guys in breakout sessions. You look